Yes, guys, my biggest challenges gardening this year, how I tackled them, whether this year or going into next year, so that we can get better at gardening and improve as we go along. So let's get it. So the first one, box moth or box caterpillar, has destroyed my boxes this year and been a real pain. Now, when I noticed it, I ordered this thing called beginning with X. I'll put the actual name in the caption of this video and it it basically it helped, it killed the caterpillars, but I've still still seen the moths sort of flying about here, there and everywhere. Now the thing of it is, is it's an invasive species, so it is okay to sort of like, yeah, try and use whatever means necessarily biologically, like obviously not um, using anything crazy to try and tackle these because they will destroy your boxers as I've found this year because although the stuff actually did get rid of them it never really recovered to look like a green sort of topiary that we all sort of know and love and basically it has gone I've got some boxers pulled at the back of the garden and it has gone on those as well and so yeah it's a real shame I don't know whether sort of going forward I'll be able to use the same treatment again and keep on top of it or whether it's something where I'm going to have to start changing these plants. I have got some boxer spools like really big ones that were already here on the front garden as well and it was on them as well. Everyone on my street who has boxers has had it this year as well so it looks like going forward that is either a sort of challenge that we're going to face every year or maybe um, we just completely get rid of them and, and replace them with something else but yeah let's get into the next one so guys the second one is blight on my tomatoes so last year i had tomatoes running all the way around this and then i was using the string method to train them up and it worked really well I had lots of tomatoes and yeah i really enjoyed it but this year they got blight very easily and um, yeah it was one of them where they had blight on the sort of stems of the plant at the bottom and so it looked really precarious like it was just going to snap and so in the end i just pulled them all out i have a few tomatoes in the greenhouse behind but um yeah it was one of those things where i thought well what can i do to stop the spread of it because there's also like allotments over there and also like save my plants that are in the greenhouse but i only had a few in the greenhouse that's the problem but yeah it was very demoralizing quite upsetting that you've sort of put all this work into it and um yeah it's, it's it's for nothing so going forward obviously i don't really want it to happen again now because they're outside that was the problem um and there was a lot of rain this year so maybe going forward i even need to get a blight resistant or a near enough blight resistant tomato and use those or i need to basically if there's going to be a lot of rain put something over this to hopefully stop as much rain sort of going on the tomato plants um, so yeah that's something that I think if you have a rainy season it's you're always going to struggle with it and I know a lot of people have struggled with it this year because it has been um, so wet so guys something else I struggled to see whether you can see me. so guys something else I struggled with this year is fish being scared because at the start of the year I had a heron helping itself to the fish um, so I noticed that one went missing and then a few days later I saw one just floating and I thought oh no like, I've got something wrong with the water like they, they don't like it and um, when I you see the fish appearing I don't know if you see it on camera but yeah when, when I sort of looked closer at the fish when I got it out I actually saw that it, it was it had like a gouge mark in the fish and um, yeah, basically what had happened is, you can see I've got a net over here at the minute, but um, during winter obviously this all dies off and so it sort of left the gap there and I hadn't really sort of clocked onto it and um, the heron actually would have um, landed there and been able to sort of get at the fish. So uh, you can see that the, so the sort of netting is around here and now you've got all this foliage up. So at that point, I pulled up, I had the netting go further and um, protected them for that sort of little bit longer um, but yeah so it was a learning curve next year I do want to do the netting a little bit better because on this side especially um, it sort of dips 
and so I want it so it's not dipping so you haven't got all these leaves collecting and you're easy to sort of get and stuff so I do want to sort that out but yeah next year I need to basically be more um, conscious of the fact that the foliage is dying back and it leaves that sort of dark for herons to sort of get the fish and um, yeah basically yeah, I need, need to be a little bit more switched on with it and another thing is I did lose a, a few more fish because the when the weather was really hot and then we had thunderstorms and stuff like that and the pump turned off and stuff like that so I had like a, I don't know if you remember, I had like a big koi off, like, off my granddad, that, that died, the last um, silver ghost koi died um, and maybe one more um, but yeah, no, so there's been a few casualties this year, there's been loads of frogs, obviously I get the frog spawn in the last two years I've got, I've got frog spawn because I've got the fish, obviously they'll eat the tadpoles and the frog spawn if you, if you give them a chance so what I do is I make like a little moat with rocks to protect it and it's worked really well the last two years and I've noticed loads of frogs all over the garden and it, it just gives the, the frog spawn chance to obviously have that development into the tadpoles, into the little frogs and then for them to move across the garden so that's worked really well um, but yeah I want to next year make sure I'm a little bit more on it with this area. I've had to get really low, the sunlight is just above the garage here um, so yeah but Basically, this year I've had really bad trouble with slugs, and I think everyone has because it's been so wet that, um, yeah, they've, they've just been so prolific. One thing I have to say is I haven't really tried to combat it. Um, after Gardener's World, I was a little bit sort of burnt out, and so I just let the garden be. And the garden's really been green this year. I've really loved that. But one thing, my hostas, you can see, are absolutely, that was fatsier there, yeah, the hostas have been eaten quite a lot. I've had um, like close to the house, like there's dahlias and stuff like that. Yeah, the the slugs have really enjoyed my garden this year. So um, yeah, going forward next year, I need to do the nemer slug. I did the nemer slug early on in the season, so I need to carry on with that and then just keep keep a little bit more on top of it. And vine weevil, they are evil. It rhymes, so it is a thing. Now the reason I'm in, I'm in this area is because this is where I first noticed the vine weevil and then I noticed them sort of spread around the garden a little bit. What I will say is I don't know whether it was a problem that was already in the garden or whether one plant in particular I brought them in on. There's a climbing hydrangea behind me which hasn't done very well because it does get devoured every year by them. But what I will say is I used the nematodes for vine weevil this year and it worked wonders because last year I was coming out and I was finding two or three vine weevils a night. Um, this year when I come out, I don't often see them. My rhododendrons, oh, the other side of this fence, they were sort of getting eaten all the way through last season and basically this season they've not even been, this year, they've not even been touched. There's a few roses sort of close to my house that have been torched, so I think it's a case of now just keeping on top every year with the nematodes to combat the vine weevil. But yeah, if you have a trouble with vine weevil, I really recommend the nematodes. They've worked really well in my garden. So the last one I'm going to mention is the rain. <laughs> like There's been so much rain. And so the reason I bring you to this area is because I've not really got a chance to sit out in the garden this year because whenever I've come to go into the garden, it's been raining. So when I have been able to get into the garden, I've had to do stuff. And yeah, I've just not been able to sort of relax in the garden. Hence this area is looking very unloved. Um, but also um, that's led on to other problems which we've sort of spoken about in slugs blight on the tomatoes which then sort of spread to my potatoes that I'd done um, which then I had to harvest early to sort of make sure that they were okay um, and yeah just in general the rain has and so yeah just in general the rain has made it a little bit more challenging um, but it's meant that we've not had to water the gardens as much so I think obviously that there is a positive that has sort of come out of that but one of the big things as well is flowers like there's not been as many flowers in my garden this year and yeah like I didn't grow as many seeds at the start because I knew that I was going to have a busy year this year but yeah it's just been at times like on my, on my dahlias like I've not really had any sort of flowers but then certain dahlias that I've left in the ground they've not really got going and when I've gone and looked they're trying to get going and the slugs are on them do you know what I mean and I've just not got on top to sort of 
um, giving them that chance. But yeah, no, so flowers, they've just not, there's not been as many this year because there's not been as much sun. Um, that, that, that's not to say that there hasn't been any, it's just certain um, plants that were sort of very um, prolific in other years haven't been. And But I can't just say that that's the rain though because I know I haven't been um, giving them enough chance either. I've not been coming out and getting out here and, and um, combating um, various issues that we've had as well. So yeah, but anyway, the sun is out now. So I'm going to get in the garden and do some bits and bobs and I'll catch you on the next one. If you can like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. But yeah, have a good one guys. Look after yourselves. I'll catch you in a bit.